Character movement and physics are the backbone of any immersive gaming experience. Whether your character is running, jumping, or interacting with the environment, understanding how to implement smooth and responsive movement is crucial. Hey guys, you are watching AshDev. In this tutorial, we'll create a character controller in Unity. But before we jump in Unity, let's talk about the two widely used approaches for making a character controller kinematic character controllers, and physics-based character controllers. Kinematic controllers focus on precise movement for a controlled, immersive gameplay experience, commonly seen in RPGs or story-driven games. On the other hand, physics-based controllers use Unity's rigid body to move characters with physics forces, creating dynamic gameplay where characters react to various physical interactions as seen in games like Fall Guys, both have their pros and cons, so you have to choose which one fits best for your game. In this video, we will be focusing on the kinematic approach by using Unity's built-in character controller component that provides basic movement functionalities right out of the box. Now, let's get started. First, create an empty game object in your Unity scene and add a character controller component to it. When you attach this component, a capsule collider will automatically appear. This is used by the character controller for collision detection and other interactions. Next, create a capsule as a child object within this game object. This capsule will act as a temporary player body. Go ahead and remove its capsule collider since the character controller already includes one. If you want, you can also add a face or a front marker to the capsule so it's easier to see which way the character is facing. Finally, fine tune the character controller's capsule to fit your player model by adjusting the radius, height, and, if necessary, the center point to ensure it aligns perfectly with your model. Next, let's code some movement for our character. Begin by creating a new script named Player Controller. Inside this script, we'll first need to set up the input controls. Start by defining two float variables, Move Input and Turn Input. These variables will capture the player's forward and backward movement, as well as their turning respectively. To handle the input from the player, create a function named input management. In this function, assign move input to track the vertical input from the W and S keys and turn input to capture the horizontal input from the A and D keys. It's crucial to ensure the strings vertical and horizontal are spelled correctly as any spelling mistakes will prevent the inputs from being recognized. Make sure to call the input management function within the update method. This ensures that the inputs are checked and updated every frame, allowing for responsive and smooth control over the character's movements. Now to implement basic movement for our character. First, create a new header labeled References. Under this header, define a private variable for the character controller named controller. This will allow us to call the character controller's methods later on. Next, add another header named movement settings, and under this header, declare a float variable called walk speed and set its initial value to 5. This variable will control how fast the character moves. Next, in the start function, get the character controller component attached to the game object by using get component character controller and assign it to the controller variable. Now, let's write a function named ground movement. In this function, create a vector 3 called move. The x value of this vector should be set to turn input to handle sideways movement and the z value should be set to move input for forward and backward movement. Since we don't want the character to move up or down, set the y value to 0. Then, to apply movement speed, multiply this vector by walk speed. Finally, to move the character, use the controller.move function and multiply the move vector by time.delta time to ensure the movement is smooth and frame rate independent. Create another function named movement and call the ground movement function inside it. Then, call the movement function within the update method. While it may seem redundant at first to call the ground movement function inside another function, this approach keeps the code clean and well-structured, allowing for easy updates and maintenance. Now, head over to the Unity editor and attach the player controller script to your player object. Once you've done this, press the play button to start the game, and you should see that your player now has the basic movement functionality. 
Before we move ahead, if you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a like and consider sharing it with your fellow developers. Your support helps us grow and continue producing more videos like this. Also, this project will be available for download on our Discord server for two weeks, so make sure you join our Discord community. Next, let's add a camera. For this, we'll be using Cinemachine. Start by installing the Cinemachine package from the Unity Package Manager. Once imported, create a free look camera. This type of camera will allow you to have a dynamic orbiting camera that can adjust to the player's movements smoothly. Drag and drop your player into the follow and look at fields of the free look camera. Next, adjust the rotational speeds on the X and Y axes to suit your gameplay needs. This will affect how quickly the camera can pan and tilt after the player's movements. Then, fine tune the height and radius of each of the rigs within the free look camera setup. These adjustments help in setting how close or far the camera orbits around the player, as well as the elevation angle. For the binding mode, select Simple Follow with World Up to maintain a stable horizon while allowing the camera to rotate around the player. If you're interested in diving deeper into camera mechanics, I recommend watching our Orbital Camera tutorial for more in-depth knowledge. Now, to add the ability for your player to turn in the direction the camera is facing, let's update your character controller script. Under the References header, create a new transform named Camera. This will reference the main camera used to determine the direction the player will face. Under the Movement Settings header, add a float variable named Turning Speed. This will control how fast the player rotates to align with the camera. Next, create a function called Turn. In this function, start by defining a vector 3 called Current Look Direction, which should be set to the camera's forward direction, but set its y-axis value to 0 to keep the rotation strictly horizontal. Then, create a quaternion named Target Rotation, which will be equal to quaternion.lookRotation and pass in Current Look Direction. This creates a new rotation that aligns with the current look direction of the camera. To smoothly rotate the player to face this new direction, use quaternion.slurp to interpolate between the player's current rotation and the target rotation, applying the turning speed for a smooth transition. Wrap this rotation logic in an if statement that checks if the player is moving. This prevents the character from rotating when stationary. Additionally, to ensure the movement respects the local orientation of the player, go back to your ground movement function. Here, before applying the movement, convert the movement vector to the player's local axis using transform.transform direction. This conversion ensures that the movement input, such as forward or backward, is correctly aligned with where the player is currently facing, not just the global direction. And make sure to call the turn function within your movement function. Now go back to the Unity editor. Here, you need to assign the camera and test the character's turning by playing the game. If you are developing a top-down game, you might want to modify the turning behavior to align the character based on their current movement direction rather than the camera's facing direction. To do this, replace the current look direction in the turn function with the character's normalized velocity, which indicates the direction the character is currently moving. And also remove the transformation of the movement vector to local direction, since the direction is now derived from the character's velocity, not from input relative to the camera. Right now, our character always faces forward, even when we are moving sideways. If you want your character to move in relation to the camera's local axis and face the direction it is moving, we need to adjust the turn function. Firstly, we need to redefine the look direction to where the player is actually heading, which can be represented by the character's normalized velocity. Next, in the ground movement function, where we previously converted movement inputs into the local axis of the player, you should change this to align with the local axis of the camera instead. Now in editor set the camera binding mode to world space, or you can use lock to target on a sign, if your character's up axis is not world up axis. And now the turn mechanism is looking good, our character controller is shaping up well, but there's one more element we need to address, that is gravity. Since our controller is kinematic, it won't automatically apply gravitational forces, which means our character won't fall down. To solve this, we will implement custom gravity. Start by adding a new float variable named gravity in the movement settings section of your script and set it to 9.8 
to mimic Earth's gravity. Also, declare another float called Vertical Velocity to keep track of the vertical movement speed of the character. Next, create a function named Vertical Force Calculation. This function will handle the application of gravity. First, check if the character controller is grounded using the controller dot is grounded. If the character is grounded, set the vertical velocity to a small negative value, such as minus 1, to ensure the character maintains contact with the ground and doesn't start to float due to any minor inaccuracies in terrain levels. If not grounded, it means the character is either falling or jumping, so you should subtract the gravity value multiplied by time dot delta time to vertical velocity to simulate falling. Then return vertical velocity, and now in our ground movement function set move dot y to vertical velocity. Go back to the Unity editor. You should now see that gravity correctly pulls the character back to the ground. Now let's add the jumping ability. First, create a new float variable named jump height to determine how high the character will jump. Set this variable to a value of 2. Next, go to vertical force calculation function. Inside it, when the player is grounded, check if the jump button is pressed. Then set the vertical velocity to math f dot square root of jump height multiplied by gravity multiplied by 2. This formula calculates the initial velocity needed to reach the desired jump height, factoring in gravity's pull. After implementing these changes, return to the editor to check if the jump performs as expected, reaching the appropriate height and allowing for subsequent jumps only when the character has landed back on the ground. Now let's add sprint ability. First, declare a new float variable called sprint speed and set its value to 10, which will be the speed at which the character sprints. Also, create another float called sprint transit speed, which will determine how quickly the character transitions to sprinting speed. And lastly, create another float named speed for storing the current speed value. Next, in the move function, check if the left shift key is pressed. If it is, use mathf.lerp to smoothly transition the current speed to the sprint speed with respect to speed transit time. If the left shift key is not pressed, transition back to the walk speed. It's important to use input.getKey rather than input.getKeyDown as getKey continues to return true for every frame the key is held down, providing a consistent increase in speed while the key is pressed. Also change the walk speed written below to speed. Now, head back to the Unity editor to test the sprint functionality. Press and hold the left shift key while moving your character, and you should see the character sprinting. You can also customize the key for sprinting by changing keycode.leftshift to any other key defined in the input settings under Unity's project settings. With this final piece, your basic character movement setup is complete. Now that we have the basic mechanics in place, let's fine-tune a few settings on the character controller component to enhance how the character interacts with the environment. Firstly, adjust the slope limit. This setting determines the maximum angle of a slope that the character can climb. Typically, setting this between 45 to 60 degrees strikes a good balance, allowing your character to navigate most terrain types without being overly restrictive. Next, set the step offset. This parameter controls the maximum height of an obstacle that the character can step onto without needing to jump. The value of the step offset is relative to the character's height. For instance, a value of 1 means the character can step up an obstacle that is as high as itself. However, in most cases, a value ranging from 0.3 to 0.5 is adequate. This allows the character to smoothly step over smaller obstructions like rocks or low stairs and avoids the need for frequent jumping. Next, let's adjust the skin width of your character controller. Skin width is essentially a small margin around the collider that helps in smoothing out collision detection. This feature prevents the character controller from catching on minor geometry bumps or edges as it moves around the environment. Next, let's discuss the min move distance property of the character controller. This property determines the minimum distance the character must move in an update for the movement to be registered. If the movement is too slight, the character remains stationary, helping to prevent jitter and reducing minor physics calculations for better performance. And that wraps up this video. We now have a basic character controller set up. In the upcoming tutorial, we'll add animation to our character controller. 
So stay tuned and thanks for watching.